Hey everybody, welcome to Checkpoint on Campus. Your host, Norris Howard here. I am joined by a very special guest, Tom Badiger, also known as F. Dot. He's the host of Collegiate Rocket League, a whole bunch of Rocket League properties, but we're here to talk about college today. Uh, and, and I just want to thank Tom for taking time out of his day to join us. Tom, how are you? First of all, you know, thank thank you for taking time out of your day to have me. So <laughs> I appreciate it, but I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's a beautiful day. I uh, I had a real busy week, and you know, it's the first time I really just get to kick back and hang out and like uh, talking talking esports and Rocket League fits right in there. Yeah, and, and let me just and let me just say this. I'm gonna just put this out there before I get you know any emails or or messages or anything. You got a great voice, man, for esports. <laughs> <laughs> you got a great esports voice, man. It's awesome. You know, it's it, it's funny. I'll take a compliment. I appreciate it. Thank you. But it, it, it's funny. I have never once like I've grown up my whole life talking sports, talking games. You know, whether it's sports or or nerd games. You know, esports and stuff. And like I have. Uh, you know, you, you know what you're good at, what you're not. And I think right. I can bring a couple of words together, but I have always said, man, you know, if I ever went into that, I just, I just don't have the voice. Like you always picture like, hello, it's me, Joe Buck, the broadcaster. <laughs> oh I'm God, no, anybody but Joe like, Buck. Absolutely not. <laughs> and like, I do not sound like that. You know, I got a weird accent. And so like, I don't know. I, I, I appreciate that, but it's, it's, uh, never something i thought i had until like i just done did it and people were like you know and i was like you're crazy but thanks <laughs> yeah no it's 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 awesome but let's let's get into some rocket league right quick um you get your you know the main host of a, of of about of a six person team broadcast team uh for collegiate rocket league uh that started off great by the way um the streams are nuts i mean it's one of the biggest collegiate esports streams out there and i think week over week it might easily be the biggest um why do you think rocket league is like resonating right now i know obviously it's just going free to play that's a big deal but um deal. uh you know why do you think rocket league is connecting with so many people right now well, I think that Rocket League, so first of all, it's free to play. We have to double up on that one because that is a huge, huge deal. Uh, but Rocket League also is the the, the intersection of our esports world, our true, like, you know, nerdiest of the nerds and like the normies, right? Like your, your, your friend that has never understood, never played a video game, has a hard time getting into League of Legends, okay? Right. And like, like, what is a mage? You know, for for people, oh, you move out, blah blah blah, no problem. Listen, Rocket League is just as foreign to everyone else that is <laughs> gamers. There's nothing like it out there. So I think that that's sort of just like, oh yeah, and and it's pick up and playability is yes. is also it right right there with it. And so I think a lot of people have been like either either looking at games for the first time because of you know covid world and everything or even just continuing to rocket league's been around for a while you probably know a friend that plays rocket league and now you know kind of doubling down and and looking at collegiate support like why the college scene in particular i think it's just the the like right kind of atmosphere you know college and sports and everything again it, it uh it kind of just hits all those intersections at once and you know when the stars align there you go right yeah, I mean, it, it's I'm a huge soccer fan, so I naturally gravitated towards uh, Rocket League. Um, same thing for my younger brother. He's a huge Rocket League fan. I think he's like Diamond One or something like that. He, I, I can't even play with him anymore. He's he's so <laughs> he's gotten so good at it. But um, you know, I, I look at collegiate Rocket League in particular, right? As college esports really starts to get more schools, more investment infrastructure, as you often like to say. Um, on the stream, um, we're starting to see certain schools emerge as really, really strong schools. I think of, especially in Rocket League, I think of Akron, I think of UCF, I think of Northwood now. Um, why do you think these schools, obviously, I know in the case of Northwood, why, but why do you think some of these schools um, are doing so well this season? I think it's just, you know, as people just uh, honestly luck of the draw is really the answer like with like because if it truly was amount of money invested or, or theoretically invested like penn state is the bottom of the league right now 
And so I think it's I think it's very telling that it's not a direct draw. Akron's got a great system yeah. in traditional sports as well, so good for them. But like I said, Penn State is one of the winningest basketball teams within here. They come into Rocket League and they can't really find the success that other teams are. So I I, I don't think it's necessarily one to one. And we right. see this in esports like a lot for the most part, where a lot of people are like, well, man, you know, I've I'm able to make money in trad sport media here i can just copy and paste esports and that's not the case and i think the teams that are successful uh with respect to like the program level Mm -hmm. at the end of the day why are these teams good it's just that the players on the squad know what they're doing and they can put you know do do the thing but as far as like when we see kind of clubs and uh like the bigger picture above the players start to succeed and create a tradition of success that's going to be the organizations like akron and stuff that understand what they can pull from traditional sports but also understand that this is a a kind of new thing it is kind of in between what you do with sports and in between what you do with like you know club chess or debate club yes. or something uh it, it's very much its own entity and and the the people that are open to understanding that are the ones that are going to wind up with the most successful program i think well, and I think that's why you're starting to see so many of the smaller schools be so successful at esports, right? Because you're not able to replicate one to one your sports program culture into your esports culture. I think of Northwood, I think of Maryville, Harrisburg, and that are good across multiple esports. Um, and I think you're right. I think that has a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with the kids you have on campus and who you could give scholarships to and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to kind of get into the nitty gritty of CRL right now. Um, I'm watching a lot of Northwood because we're in Michigan, so I got to rep. I got to rep my Michigan <laughs> to you. Um, I watch a lot of Northwood. I watch a lot of Akron, but I'm also trying to check out the West a little bit. And it seems to me that the East this season is way stronger than the West. Um, And even some schools in the East that were strong last season or a couple seasons ago are not as strong. Um, You know, I feel like what's what's going on with that? I mean, I know a lot of teams are really good, but it seems like the West just on average is, is not close to the East. It's, you know, I, I mean, first and foremost, Northwood is like literally a semi professional team. True. So, like, you know, <laughs> you get a big old asterisk there when you look at what Noxus is able to do with the boys, you know. So, so first and foremost, yeah, if we got an East, if we got an East versus West rum, Rumble, you know, sorry to say, folks, but East Coast, Beast Coast, we're doing it again. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, you look at University of Akron and everything, and these guys. Akron is not as a lot of the commentators are saying that they're not as dominant as they were last year. So although Northwood is like sitting pretty on that throne and I I I think it takes something very special to kind of like topple them from the mm-hmm. de facto number one team overall in the league. I think once you look towards two, three, four, five, all of a sudden that level kind of levels out. Whereas when you look at the Western Conference and you look at all the teams in Texas. <laughs> you look at you look at the Ducks and, and and everything. It is a more aggregate, like like mm-hmm. uh, a more excuse me, a more concise league almost, if you will. Yeah. Which is funny because if you pay attention to the RLCS, I think it really mirrors that way that kind of works, where you have two dominant teams in Europe and then over in North America, it's a little bit more spread out. Yeah. And with respect to CRL, I think that's really what we see. Where on the east side, it's it's Northwood. Come and try and take my money. You're not going to do it. And then a couple of these like strong teams in the two and three spot that might have slid down a little bit overall. And then in the West, instead of having one ring to rule them all, so to speak, you have like <laughs> the Power Rangers. You just have like one through five can beat one through five any given Sunday, or in our case, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? Like, <laughs> and that is, I think, you know, it's overall, you have to say East is 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 the dominant one. Why? Because of Northwood. But big picture, I think it's kind of like a an interesting dichotomy between the two. You get two different yeah. products almost. Yeah, and, and you know what, to me, I think that's really cool because, you know, again, drawing back to my soccer analogy, I watch, you know, Spain, where you got Barcelona and Real Madrid will beat everybody with Atletico Mm -hmm. sometimes. And then you have the Premier League, which this year I couldn't tell you who's going to win. So uh, it it really does create a lot of excitement. I will agree that the exciting matches to me are happening more in the West, where you're seeing a lot of blowouts in the East. Um, So I think that 
is I think that is a really interesting interesting thing. So I want to I want to touch on this because you brought up the RLCS and you know what they've been able to do to create really such a great esports ecosystem. I think you know Psionic slash Epic has done a great job at creating a good atmosphere for that esport. Um, do you see that they are taking a lot of what worked in RLCS and putting it into uh, CRL or is CRL kind of creating its own identity? Uh, see, it's a great question. And CRL is absolutely creating its own identity. Now, you know, it's sort of like, it's sort of like living in the same house as an older sibling with a, a fantastic track record. Like, if you have something that really crushed it, yeah, give me the study sheet, okay? I want to pass the test too, buddy. But at the same time, fly and do your own thing. You want to be an artist, kid? Go ahead. You know, it's, it's totally fun. And I think that has really allowed CRL to be this. I consistently call CRL one of the best esports programs on television, on, on, on Twitch, or on streaming platforms, you know, with... When you look at when when I think of strong esports proj, uh, products, I think of obviously your mind goes to like League of Legends because they have all this you know the lights, camera, action for sure. But I look for like character and 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 real like uh, real just authenticity, and that's what the CRL is a hundred percent about, which I think is perfect because the teams are you know the, the teams are there for. You know, when we look at the NCAA, is it really about amateurism? That's a big old question. Right, the, the right. The RL teams here, it is about amateurism. There is a te there are teams that like contend with the RLCS squads, but like we talk to these we talk to these kids uh, in, in post game and pre game interviews, and like you know, yesterday we had one of the players had all his frat brothers behind him, just <laughs> like yeah, yeah. They're always shouting out like. You know, you, you give a shout out and it's not like shout out my sponsors one through 27. It's like shout out my mom who's watching. My grandma is also watching. And <laughs> you had an interview. <laughs> you had an interview with, uh, with Tristan the other day. And he's just like got his hood on in a dark room. And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, shout out my Twitter. And then doesn't give his Twitter. <laughs> Last time we interviewed Tristan, he was like, shout out the world. And then left, like, you know, it's totally, we let, we let the players be the players. And, and that's something, you know, that I, I have always championed. And when I joined the CRL team, they were like, all right, listen, you know, this is a little bit different. We want you guys to like unbutton a little bit. We want you to have fun. We want you, this, uh, this should be about the players. And I was like, excellent. That's the yeah. esports show I've always wanted to do. Like, cause that's what it's about. <laughs> esports is about the community and chilling and CRL is 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 absolutely community and chilling i think that a lot of the notes that our rlcs has set as far as like learning proper formats and learning what people enjoy watching and how to deliver a strong product as they do with you know fantastic numbers uh, looking at you know 150,000 people yeah. tuning into regionals and stuff like yeah you're gonna take a couple of those notes and pass it on to crl but totally. allowing it to become its own show and and again highlight the players we've we've now kind of looked to show more of the crl person personality and expand to a pre-show which honestly we just have fun <laughs> yeah it's a it's a great pre-show and and you know top to bottom uh i think you guys have done a great job at creating uh a, a really good product and beyond that um it Thank feels you. like everybody enjoys themselves which at the end of the day that's what it's really all about is everybody enjoying themselves from the players to the casters to, you know, the desk staff, you know, for lack of a better term, um, to, to the deskies. Um, you guys have done a great job. I think uh, Collegiate Rocket League has turned into a really awesome thing to watch. I recommend it literally every time somebody asks me about college esports um and tom you guys you're 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 a major major part of that so uh we want to thank you for joining us on the show uh you're welcome anytime man you you you're you're great anytime you got something to get on your soapbox about and you're just like i can't i can't talk about this all this stuff come on down and we got you careful careful i just might take you up on that and that i don't know you might have to backpedal that a little bit no it's a, listen i spicy yeah. things. i listen we want we want all the spice we want the paprika we want all of it we want all of it so thank you so much for joining us and uh we wish you well on all of your uh streams and everything you got coming in the future 
Yeah, again, thank you so much for having me. I, I uh, love to put the spotlight on on everything we're doing at CRL and otherwise. And also, I, I really uh, I really like what you guys do. I think, you know, paying attention to this sort of thing is really important. So thanks for shining a light and having me. Appreciate you. Thank you.